the wait is over. We finally have an ending. After what, two years? DC finally, finally puts out the end. Doomsday Clock number 12. So, just read this. I got good and bad. Good and bad. Now, I haven't watched what other people say, and they probably would explain it to me. But there's a lot of stuff in here that I just don't understand what's going on. And uh, maybe that's because it's been two years since I read the last issue. Okay, that's an exaggeration. It's been a long time since I read the last issue. Um, there's some really excellent moments in this. Um, really excellent moments. And then there's some others that could have been better. Um, first of all, there's a huge splash cover fight scene. Double page and everything. That... I thought it was wasted. Um, here it is. And so my problem with this is that uh, I don't know any of these characters. And it looks like the battle that's supposed to be going on on Mars with um, Superman and uh, um, the blue guy. I don't know his name. I'm terrible with names, and I don't really know the Watchmen characters. Was it Osmandius? That's my guess. No, Osmandius is the other guy. The blue dude. This dude. So these two, aren't they on Mars? Isn't that what I remembered right? And why are they now in Washington, D.C.? I don't remember, because it's been two years. But a lot of the fights seem to be in a city. Like, you have Superman save this random child, and his mom, I, I think. Pretty cool. But at the same time, you kind of got like a uh, an old uh, um, 1938 feel right there. Um, him holding the car. Pretty cool. But at the same time, I'm like, weren't they on Mars? I know he fought the Justice League on Mars, but I don't know. I don't know. So that, there was that. But I didn't know any of these characters. I mean, I'm sure Lewis would, but... I'm just like, who in the world are all these people? There's a couple I know, like, that's a Giganta, um, maybe, if this is the same battle, that's supposed to be, um, oh my goodness, I, I'm lost her name, Black Adam, that's right, um, trying to look, I don't, I don't know anybody else, like, I'm sure that they're supposed to these people, but who in the world are they? Who are they fighting? Why are they fighting? I think that they're a bunch of villains from a bunch of different plan uh, countries. Or, I was about to say planets. A bunch of different countries or something. They're all fighting or something over Superman. Who gets to take him? I don't know. It was weird. Didn't really flow well for me. Um, but I'll tell you what really did work well. Um, it took me a minute, but he did a lot of like talk going back in time, talking about all the different pasts. Um, and all the different possibilities, um, which he's been doing for a while, so it kind of did seem, what, what's the word, superfluous, like extra, like, rep uh, repetition of the same stuff. But uh, it kind of worked well when Superman, uh, um, Batman was kind of wasted, in my opinion, in this. Um, but I'll talk about that later. Superman finally gets to the punch. And we get these three panels, which are beautiful. Just awesome. Just really excited about that. And but before I turn the page, it's like, here we go. We finally get an answer. And uh, I didn't really understand it right away. It took a second to breathe in. But, spoiler, he uh, punches the guy behind him. He doesn't punch him, he punches the guy behind him. And so, basically, Superman convinces him to save their planet to restore everything after he convinced uh he tells superman that he's the one that has uh taken away all the mentors in his past and uh after he's the one that basically created the new 52 uh, which is interesting because he references that we finally get like the official in canon answer um uh to why why that happened uh, why the New 52 with uh, Flash Rebirth happened. And then we got New 52 and then we got Rebirth. It's all because of the Blue Dude. And again, I'm sorry, Watchmen fans. I'm just not 
Watchmen wasn't my favorite series. It was, I mean, I haven't read it, I just watched the movie. But uh, I have been enjoying Doomsday Clock, I will say that. I just, I don't know the characters that well. Dr. Manhattan, that's who it is, right? <laughs> I may have yelled it in the comments. Anyways, <laughs> the blue dude. <laughs> I think it's Dr. Manhattan now. Uh, um, they go through this long talk about futures. He's like, yeah, there's been mentors and uh, friends that you uh, have not known because I took them away from you. And then we get one of the best moments of the... All right, that was the best um, right there where he punched it. Like, we're leading up to the... That's the to the punch, that's that's the punchline we were waiting for. Um, I really like it. Everything kind of fades. He's like, I understand that. And then everything fades to darkness. Even Superman's uh, crest, which is the last thing to disappear. And then we get like a whole page of blank, which I thought was perfect. Perfect. I was like, don't tell me the rest of this book is black, which would have been mind-blowing. If they had the balls to do that... I would have, my mind would have been blown. But no, they, they, they bring it back, which which is just as good. And we get basically like the, uh, a, a retelling of Superman in every, and an explanation of how the multiverse was created, which is Superman. The multiverse was created around Superman and uh, to provide for each generation, which is very meta. I thought that was really good. It's the first time in a while that, some a, a writer has done a meta story, and it worked. Um, so props to Jeff Johns. Um, anyways, we get one of the cool moments where we get Superman and the Legion of Superheroes. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think that there's some uh, JL uh, um, Justice League uh, uh, characters in there too, like Alan, uh, Alan Scott. I was really excited to see him. Uh, we finally got, like, the, what is it, Johnny Storm, Johnny Quick, I don't know. Um, I think Johnny Storm is Marvel, so, what is that guy's name? I'm, I'm doing terrible with names tonight, guys, I'm sorry. Um, I know what's in here, I saw it. Um, I like the Legion ring lighting up. Um, I don't have it on right now, but uh, I've been wearing my Legion ring that Brandon gave me and let us all over the place. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, um, Lewis doesn't wear it around, but that's him. I think it, maybe Johnny Thunder. I don't know. It's this dude, the old dude, and he transforms into uh, the lightning over here. And what's the word he says? Um, uh, see you, Caillou. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't read really that. I can show it to you though. That's what he says r r right there. So, um, and I just really cool. Uh, you know, I love seeing all these characters back. I know a few of them. Um, I'm excited to know some more. And uh, I just really love the homage to all the all the leagues in the past, and, and we got an homage to Flashpoint. We got a um, homage to uh, the New Fifty Two. We got Superman with the collar. Um, there's there's a uh, Johnny and all of his wonder right there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then we got another cool moment where we see like the full Justice League. Uh, sad that Kyle Rayner and Simon Baez didn't show up on here. Also, where's Tim Drake? We've got Donna Troy and some other random chick that I don't know beside uh, Barbara Gordon, but no Young Justice. Oh look, it uh, looks like Batwing is up here. Why do you have Batwing but not Tim Drake or not even Damian Wayne? Like you can't even you can't even bring Damian in, and that's like DC's love love interest right there. By that I mean like everybody over at DC seems to love them some Damian Wayne for some reason. Anyways, I'm not biased against Damian anymore. I don't. He's not as good as Tim or or uh, Dick or um, <clears throat> um. Man, I'm I'm blanking. The second Robin. Man, I'm tired. Sorry guys. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it because it's been forever trying to come up with a name. 
Anyways, um, he's not, he's he's the fourth best Robin <laughs> out of four. <laughs> we'll we'll put it that way. Um, Jason Todd. There we go. If I ramble on enough with about other things, I'll remember. Anyway, so that's my thoughts. I, I enjoyed it. There's some really great moments. We kind of get some canonized a lot of the thought that people have been speculating about this, that he was the one um, who caused all of the stuff, and they actually said it explicitly in, in canon, uh, which is great. Um, I thought that was a good move. Uh, and he leaves some people in both universes, um, which is interesting. Um, so there's some future uh, crossovers that we could come up. And I thought probably one of my favorite things that, that he did, which is very smart, while he was talking about his changes to the past, he talks about Superman's future, which is really cool. He talks about a few more crises that are coming up. So, first, um, Earth 5G is born from, well, okay, that's not first. Um, in 2020, um, there's a, uh, um, Superman's timeline is bombarded by the reckless energies of the old gods, once again uh, warping the metaverse. Um, so that's supposed to be this year. And then a crisis like any other, unlike any the met, uh, metaverse, you mean multiverse, metaverse, has seen one they will call the Time Masters erupts. Um, so maybe that has a lot to do with Rip Hunter. That'd be cool. Uh, but it, in its wake, Superman is revitalized. And his greatest ally return. And then we see all the characters there. Um, then we see... Blah, blah, blah. Um, he's the North Star. We knew that. Uh, timelines restored and, and Earth 5G is born. Then we see that uh, Superman goes on a quest to find Bruce Wayne's lost daughter. So she can save Bruce's son. I guess that's Damien. I don't know. I think it's interesting that he has a lost daughter. Maybe some other random lady raped Batman. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe in another timeline, Batman and Wonder Woman had a, a daughter. Ooh, that'd be cool. Um, okay, <clears throat> then we have the secret crisis in 2030. Um, and then, in that one, Superman fights a green behemoth, which is stronger than Doomsday. Interesting. Um, and that guy dies, the green behemoth dies, protecting Superman from the invaders. So, a lot of stuff coming on. Um, let's see here. Ba 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 ba. And then he just goes on to a bunch of times where Superman is created. So, pretty cool stuff. A lot of stuff. Gonna, it's going to cause a lot of speculation, I think, for the future. What's going to happen? Um, I just realized that Superman's right there. So, pretty cool. Uh, anyways, let me know what you thought. Um, I'm finally glad the story is over. Um, I had forgotten about it over and over again. It was on my, you know, the bottom of my list because I just didn't know or care about it. It's just been so long since anything had happened in it. But I enjoyed reading it. It was fun. There's some great moments in there. Some others that could have been better. Um, again, Batman's whole arc in there is kind of wasted. Wonder Woman doesn't do anything. Maybe she's one of the ones incapacitated on, the, on Mars. What happens to all the Justice League who are on Mars? I don't know. Um, although I guess maybe uh, the, the intention is that... Um, Manhattan undoes everything? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, curious. Um, I can't wait to see what, what DC has in the future. Um, so, let me know what you think. Uh, for day five, I'm going to probably read most of, if not this whole series. Um, uh, cannot, uh, Canon, The Last Padawan. It's the first few issues. Um, one through six. I just finished Rebels, watching Rebels not that long ago, and I loved it. And so, this is tomorrow, sneak peek for day five. So, let me know what you read for day four, what you thought about it, what you thought about Doomsday Clock, uh, the finale, and uh, I'll, I'll see you uh, next time.
Peace.